Hey, um, this is my first screencast ever, so, uh, if there's any audio lag or, you know, something's not right exactly, I apologize in advance. Anyway, so, um, I just got my hands on, as you can see, Ubuntu 11.10 Beta 1, um, and this is basically the newer, uh, this is the newest version of Unity. Um, it's in beta, so there, uh, keep, a message keeps popping up telling me something is crashing, so whatever. Um, but this is the new login screen. Um, and basically, I'm just going to go over what I see, the di basically, uh, the differences that I've seen. I'm sure there's other differences and other technical stuff. I didn't read any release notes or anything, so I apologize. Uh, anyway, so um, I apologize if I say anything that's stupid. <laughs> anyway, so this is the new login screen. It's got, like, dots or whatever, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's got the default wallpaper in the back. Um, then you have this little cool, you get this cool little animation that comes with, uh, you know, that comes with, um, you know, clicking on a different one. Uh, guest guest account, you have a login, and then this right here would would be your session uh, Ubuntu or two, uh, Ubuntu two D, which would be if you don't have three D acceleration, um, I believe. And then you have the volume here, which the uh, orange thing or whatever doesn't seem to be working there. Uh, then you have the clock, and then you have the system menu. So let me log in here. Okay, you might hear the sound, the uh, boot up. Yep, okay. I'm pretty sure you'll hear that. Anyway, so that's the um, boot up sound. And uh, so looks pretty much the same, only the one of the uh, big differences is this right here. I'm not sure if this is going to be permanent, or if this is a bug, or if it's actually what they're going to do. But uh, the you know, where on an Ubuntu 11.04, you had the button up here, which would bring up the menu, but now you have it as an actual thing right here. Uh, the applications thing that was down here is no longer there, and I think the files and folders was also down in there, too. I don't know. As you can see, I'm using KDE right now, so haven't been on Unity in a while. Uh, more like a while, more like a month. Anyway, so um, that's that. Uh, this right here looks a little bit different. Um, at least it looks different from what I remember. Uh, I could be wrong with that, but anyway, it looks nice, and uh, I'm sure if you have like a user picture, it'll be right there. Uh, this right here is the system menu, uh, and you have system settings, which is the you know control panel like thing, I guess, uh, and that'll bring up uh, this thing. Uh, if you notice, there's a slightly new look to it um, for this, and that's because they're using the GNOME 3 applications instead of the. Uh, I'm just going to put that in the corner, because if I hit cancel, it keeps opening. Anyway, but instead of using the, like, GNOME 3, instead of using GNOME 2.x, they're using GNOME 3.x. So, um, to give you an example, if I open up Nautilus here, you'll see it looks different. Uh, and then also, if I go to Help, About, you have Nautilus 3.1.4 instead of, like, 2.32, I believe. Uh, and then the search, like that, and then you have all your stuff right here. So... That's new. Um, then they have displays here, which would be your resolution. My resolution's crap, so I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I tried to get it as close to 720p, and yeah, it doesn't work very well. It's not a default resolution. Anyway, uh, and I'm not technical enough to do the terminal stuff. I took one look at it, and I'm like, that's over three commands, more <laughs> more, more than I can handle. Anyway, so then you have startup applications is, is um, in the system menu, which I don't really see why it's in the system menu. I think it should be in the system sen uh, settings, but I don't believe it's in here. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's kind of, yeah, I, I, I don't think that that should be there. Maybe that's just, they have it there so they can access it right now. Um, I have no idea. Uh, this right here, it says software up to date, uh, and if there's updates available, it'll say uh, updates available. Basically, this uh, brings up the update manager, which um, before, you'd see the update manager show up in here, and it'd be minimized. Um, it would show up as an actual window, and it'd be minimized. I didn't see that uh, it didn't show up when there was updates available, but it did show up in this menu. So I'm I'm hoping that they're getting rid of that whole, you know, hey, let's let's bug you to death uh, with a window popping up in your face. <laughs> anyway, so uh, then it has another menu right here called Attached Drives. I'm assuming this will be, well, it has printers on here, so I'm also going to assume that USB devices or whatever will be hooked up and shown on here. So you could, like, click on that. And then you have the regular, you know, lock screen, shut down, all that stuff. Uh, so then you have... Uh, as I showed you the gnome, and then you have the menu. Now the menu is a little bit different. Uh, I think this transparency is a is a bug, because I don't think that they're going to have this stay transparent with this. Anyway, so this is just the same thing as it was before. Only now you get filter results, which um, doesn't really show anything on the home. 
Uh, then you have the Applications tab, which has the applications, the files, which has files, and then if you look at the filter results for this stuff, you have the filter results for this, which you have um, uh, the last modified, the type, and the size, and then with the filter results here, you get the menus, um, and then over here you have the decade for the music, and I don't know where 90s went, but um, apparently it's old 60s, 70s, 80s, O's and 10s. There's no no 90s, so I don't know where they went. Anyway, so you have uh, blues, classic, all that stuff. You have your genres. Okay, so one of the things that I, that really bugs me is, well, first you can't even right-click this, which I think is a problem. Um, so it, let's say as a brand new user you want to get to Tomboy Notes, but you don't, but like you don't know that it's Tomboy Notes. You don't know what it's called. So what you do is you want to go to, even if you knew that it was in accessories, right? So we'll just go to the extended accessories menu. Now before on before Unity, you'd click, um, you'd click on the menu, applications, accessories, and you'd see the whole accessories menu. One click. This right here, one click, two click, three click, four click, five clicks. There's five clicks that you need to do in order to see the full menu for accessories and that works for internet too to see the full thing for internet although they're hidden over here uh, to see the full thing for internet same thing with office although they're not showing up down here but accessories seem to be doing it so that's a problem of I mean to get for having having five clicks definitely is not making it easier to use um, it's it's making it a lot it takes longer to get there. Now also one of the other problems that I have is let's say you're looking at all applications which is what the thing is set to by default and you have you know this right here and you let's say you don't know as a new user you don't know what you're looking for so you click on see more results and you see the applications now there is one two three four five seven there's seven uh, columns here now the problem with that is you now have seven columns and you have to scroll through here Am I the only person who sees something wrong with this? Um, you have, you know, seven columns and a lot of rows of just pictures and names. Now, let's say you have no idea what uh, Libra Math is, or let's say LibreOffice Impress. Let's say you have no idea what that is, and you're just like, I just want to use a PowerPoint. I don't, where is PowerPoint? So, you know, because you're coming from Windows or whatever, or you know, you're coming from uh, Mac and you're using, um, I don't know, whatever Mac's version is, I know it's under a different name. Uh, Keynote is it? I don't know. Anyway, so basically, so you're looking for that. You have no idea where it is. And, you know, this is, I'm pretty sure that's what this is. I, I could be completely wrong. This could not be presentation. I don't use LibreOffice or make presentations. Anyway, so one of the biggest, another big problem that I see with this is not only that, you know, for new users, seeing this many icons is extremely daunting. Um, like if I was a new user and I'd never used a system before and I have to pick my application out of this massive list of what, 80 some applications, 90 plus applications, it, it's really um, frightening, I guess is the best way to describe it. But what's also um, bad about this is if you hover over it, it doesn't give you any more information. So the only way you could possibly know what these are is by actually opening them up. Like if you don't know what, let's say, remote desktop viewer is. You have to actually open it up, and, well, that doesn't really help much either, but, you know, you have to actually open it up in order to figure out what exactly it is. Um, system testing, you know, even if it was just, when you hover over it, nothing shows up. So that, I see, is a big problem. Um, and then also, let's say, for example, you have a full-resolution screen, right? Um, and then someone, I don't know if this screen will open full. I think it'll probably open like this, but because I have my resolution pretty low, um, it'll do this. But let's say you have a full resolution, 1920 by 1080 resolution, and then you bring this full screen because let's say someone is hard at hearing, or hard at hearing, hard at seeing. Um, and then they click on this, they're going to have like 12, 13, 14 columns and they would have to, their eyes would have to scour the whole, you know, 21 inches, 22 inches of their monitor. Um, and then there's even 24 inches, 25 inch monitors with that resolution. Um, and even with it being like a regular standard 15.6 inch screen on a laptop with a 1366 by 768 resolution, um, you still have to scour 15.6 inches to try and find specifically what application you're looking for, which is not something that's very nice on the eyes. I mean, your 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 eyes are flying all over the place. Um, so, 
and when when you have tons of icons that are specifically targeted at making you know having certain ones catch your eye um it's very it's what i call content overload i'm sure that there's an actual term for it but and maybe that is the actual term i have no idea but basically it's just brand new users would get, should feel or at least i know i would feel extremely daunted um and extremely like almost like well, i just want this i don't i don't know where i'm supposed to go i just want this um so that right there i think is a problem um and that's the biggest problem that i had with unity too which uh unity in 11.04 so I, I don't know if they're going to fix that or if they're just going to keep it like that. But um, I will say I don't like that. Anyway, so um, last thing I'm going to do is show you uh, the Ubuntu Software Center. It's got a new icon, and it was completely redone. Um, and I, re I really do like um, the Ubuntu Software Center. I only have one problem with it, and it's a small problem. So it's not like, you know, a big deal. Um, so basically, I don't know why it keeps opening up Maximized. It keeps opening up map maximize for me. Anyway, so um, this right here is the new center. It looks, if you have been using uh, Ubuntu Software Center, it looks very, very different than what you've seen before. If you click on this little main thing here, um, it'll bring you up to RPIX, which I'm assuming is like the featured category. Um, and then you have the different categories over here. Um, I think they might need to clean that up because there's tons of empty space right here. Uh, but then also what I noticed here is 56,000 apps. Um, available, which is really nice. I remember that there was like 30,000 or something like that last time I checked. So the fact that they're getting more applications is nice. The only problem that I really see, oh, and also if you click on this right here, provided by Ubuntu, Canonical Partners for purchase. Um, but the uh, only big problem that I have is very poor category, like very poor organization for the games. Um, the games I've always, in the Ubuntu Software Center, you know, games are one of the first things that people look into, like, oh, I want to have fun, you know, on my system, what games can I play? And, you know, there's 511, so it's, it's a decent number, but a lot of them aren't very good. Um, but basically, you have a separate category for sports here, which has, like, nothing in it. <laughs> and this one sucks, this one sucks, this one sucks. I mean, I've never played these, but I'm looking at the ratings here. These ones seem to suck, and these guys are, this, these are okay, this seems okay. But, like, for the most part, it, these are you know, free tennis, eat the whistle, and tennis. So you have, um, so these games seem, you know, they're not very good, but you have a whole separate category for sports. How, and you have a category for role playing, but one of the categories that I, I'm surprised you don't have is first person shooters. It's one of them, uh, probably the most popular genre out there right now, um, and they're categorized, the shooters are categorized with arcade. And I mean, just going down the list, you have Newitz, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, Sour Broughton, um, I'm sure there's someone missing, Alien Arena, uh, Enemy Lines, I know Assault Cube is somewhere in there, at least I thought it was. Um, so there, and that's, you know, and in order to find the shooters, you have to go and scour through, how many are there? That, that's, I, I don't like this number, this number, I, I guess this number's gotta be broken, but there's definitely gotta be more than 127 there. But you have to go through a lot of games just to find, you know, you have to go through the largest section to find shooters. So um, if you're trying to bring more gamers in, that is not a good idea. Um, having not, ha so, because um, one of the things that Linux is famous for is not having a lot of games. So if you have a category specifically for first-person shooters, it'll get gamers more interested in actually going there. Um, if they look over this real quick and they only see role-playing, like where, you know, I'm a shooter, I like shooter games, you know, and then they don't want to go and try and find the games through arcade. So I, I think there should be much more categories, you know, much more subcategories for games. Um, and that's about the only problem that I have with the uh, Software Center. Anyway, so... Um, that's all. That's all um, I have. They have a cool little animation here. If the system stops freezing, okay. But they have a cool little animation here, like when it it fades out, and also they fix the little thing where when you put it, when you drag the window up, um, it's now an animation instead of it being like how close you are to it. If you know, you, if you don't know what I mean, then then never mind. But uh, that's just one thing that really bugged me, even though I never use it except this one. Um, but whatever. So anyway, so, uh, let me know what you think. That's all I got. Uh, if there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, this is my first one, so I apologize <laughs> if the audio is off, you know, same old deal I gave you, I told you at the beginning of the video. Anyway, so, uh, that's it. So, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.